Hello everyone. Welcome to the session come demonstration on shift lift testing with Selenium and DevSecOps by Irfan Ahmed. Presently, Irfan works as a senior engineering manager at Upgrad, leading the testing and release practices. He helps teams to deliver quality in this in their software with speed, security, and scale. Moreover, he loves writing humor and building game applications on mobile for fun. Without further ado, over to you, Irfan. Thanks, Siddhant, for uh, for the introduction. Uh, I'll share my screen. So uh, I'll be speaking on you know uh, shift like security testing with Selenium. Uh, so uh, I'm currently working at Upgrad. Uh, as a senior engineering manager, I am taking care of the uh, testing and release practices and also functional, non-functional testing, security, scalability testing there. And I'm also, also running a community project, site project. Uh, I'm audible, right, Siddhan? Yes, Irfan. Uh, okay. Probably something at which is in it. Yeah. Okay. And I'm also running a, a side project called CheckOps where... Basically, uh, the mission is to help people who are building websites to check websites on their own. So I publish uh, open source checklists, uh, tool reviews uh, to help them decide uh, the tool and also uh, some in-house tool to you know help them check the website. So I'll start with the learning outcomes so that uh, you can you know relate if this this actually helps you or not um, and make best use of the conference today. So uh, the learning outcome is that uh, to understand the importance and approach to security testing in modern times and modern, uh, you know, uh, modern context, uh, how you can leverage uh, your functional testing uh, tools or like, like Selenium to run the security test also. Uh, some hands-on examples and a demonstration, live demonstration, and a guide on setting up the DAS pipeline in your organization. That is the learning outcome uh, briefly. Uh, so outline is we'll start with uh, uh, security testing uh, as a part of SDLC, why it is needed, uh, the challenges in traditional model of security testing that we have a lot of places, uh, the newer model of DevSecOps and what role uh, we can play in form of uh, security testing, uh, using Selenium for security testing uh, along with the security tools. Uh, demonstration and future roadmaps, what all things we can, you know, add and build on top of it for later on. Uh, I would request, you know, to uh, uh, whatever questions you have, uh, uh, we'll, we'll look at the questions, you know, towards the end of the session so that uh, we can, you know, focus more on the presentation. So what is the need for, uh, you know, shift leg -like security testing? Uh, shift, -like, shift left is nothing but, you know, a principle where we, uh, try to do the activity uh, before uh, and much, much, uh, you know, uh, earlier in the entire SDLC cycle. Uh, so why do we need uh, this? Uh, why this is more important nowadays? Uh, first thing is increasing uh, cyber threats and attacks in last few years, especially after COVID. Uh, by recent reports, every 10, 11 seconds, there is one, you know, cybersecurity incident and it can happen to anybody. Uh, the cost of vulnerabilities are increasing. Uh, the cybersecurity vulnerabilities cost is going to be uh, a third, you know, third uh, largest economy after US and China, uh, uh, around 10 trillion. Uh, the increasing number of, you know, penetration and demand that's happening because, because the rise of, uh, you know, people, uh, the exploits have increased. Uh, also, the industry expectation of faster delivery. So, just because we have to do security testing doesn't mean that you know we'll uh, deliver things slower. The expectation of industry is as fast as we want to do. So we have to you know figure out a smarter approach for uh, doing automation, automated security testing as part of SDLC. So we'll look look at that. So let's take let's take a, a real world example. Okay, uh, imagine imagine you are working in a e-commerce company. Let's say Juice Cart. So Juice Cart. Uh, is an e-commerce company which uh, deliver fresh juices to you in 10 minutes. So it's a simple, you know, website like this. So I've just taken a like juice shop like this. Okay, so it has basically uh, a login page, sign up page, etc. Like simple uh, e-commerce application. So you are a QA uh, in this juice card organization, 
and you are responsible for quality of the juice card website so uh, as obviously like the security is part of the quality so what will you do how will you consider you know security testing in this case is what we can you know think of the context here so so what are your options uh, the first option is you know you can delegate it you can choose not to do uh, but it's a big risk uh, to your organization uh, second option is you can do it uh, the security testing aspect you can do it separately manually uh, but doing too many things will also lead you to burnout or uh, the third option is you can you know you can think of an approaches to automate it uh, so that's a win win situation for you okay so if you delegate it so uh, in a lo lot of organizations uh, there is uh, people you know delegate security testing outside you know in form of external penetration testing uh, what we observe usually is that it becomes very late because the cycles of de delivery are faster uh, so it becomes very late and feedbacks comes late uh, and the cost of you know bugs are higher in that case if you have a separate infosec team usually they are very small and uh, it's very difficult to get the you know feedback on the right page as compared to uh, what we are doing uh, the release testing and if nobody is doing it, it's a big risk uh, so we need to look, look at this option uh, for the second option you know doing it separately manually the traditional security testing approach that is followed a lot of places is uh, we do vulnerability assessment and penetration testing as part of that uh, the penetration testing happens towards the end or basically towards the right side of the SDLC cycle. So uh, as part of the cycle, you know, when uh, development happens after that build uh, functional testing, after the release, we go for uh, penetration testing. Even if sometimes we go before the release, it's uh, basically too late uh, in that in that whole cycle. And uh, anything late, you know, increases the cost of, you know, bug fixes, these things. So. Uh, the challenge with this traditional model is that the bugs are identified late. Uh, application changes faster than you know the penetration testing cycles in those cases. Uh, the coverage is always or mostly less as compared to QA regression testing because in whenever we are doing you know regression testing uh, by automation or manually, we cover uh, everything the entire uh, entire flows. Uh, which in penetration testing is oftentimes difficult. We'll look at it and the challenges with the tools and uh, things which we follow. And of course, there's an additional effort, you know, post-testing phase that we have to put. Uh, these are the uh, challenges in traditional model of uh, security testing. So what next? Uh, so what does shift left mean? Uh, shift left in terms of security means that adding security early in the stages of SDLC. Uh, it can start as early as requirements of code, but we'll focus uh, more on you know how we can do it in, as uh, do it as early as when the testing process. So the number one thing is adding security early stages of SDLC, and second is to avoid security fixes post testing release. Basically, doing the penetration testing before uh, and or together with functional testing part. Uh, why we need to automate it? Of course, there are challenges with manual security testing uh, and uh, early detection and uh, the coverage also will be more in this case. Uh, so this new model is the DevSecOps model. So what happens typically in DevOps cycle is, you know, uh, there's a source code uh, version control build and test execution. You basically deploy it after that. Uh, the difference in DevSecOps is that there is an additional uh, SAST, which is source code analysis part uh, added uh, as part of this cycle, and DAST, which is dynamic application security testing part added as part of test execution. So we'll focus on this part, which is dynamic application security testing, and how we can do uh, as part of our end-to-end uh, -end automation testing that we are doing with Selenium, IPM, et cetera. So the model that we prefer is the DevSecOps model. So we'll we'll uh, dig deeper into how you know how we can do that. Uh, what where exactly we we can implement this. So uh, we have a lot of different uh, SaaS tools. Uh, uh, basically, sorry, DAS tools. Uh, 
many are free and you know commercial tools uh there's os blab burp uh, many other tools are there uh, uh they have you know features less and more uh, around same uh, depend depending upon how much they can crawl and how much active sessions they can have uh, the main features are like they can manually uh, you can manually explore the the urls you can record the sequence of actions and they typically also have you know api and library support uh, sorry for the typo this is dash tools uh, i was talking about so one of the dash tool is uh, uh, vulnerability scanning tool is oasp zap which is z attack proxy uh, this is free and open source available i've given the link also uh, which you can uh, you can go through uh, and which also will be using uh, in our demonstration so your ci cd model or uh, model will be that uh, once you do uh, your code and build build a code deploy you do functional testing with selenium and you you do the penetration testing uh, or dash with with os zap and then after these both these testing you basically you know uh, uh, do bug fixes and release uh i'll just show you uh, how we can how it looks the zap tool also uh, I'll show the both cases first, you know, I'll just uh, scan a URL with manually and also show how we can do with Selenium and have a similar output in that case. So uh, this is the uh, Zap tool. We can configure, uh, I have mentioned, you know, uh, the port as uh, 8090. So it will listen to that 8090 port. So basically this Zap will act as a, uh, as a browser itself, uh, where it will listen to the entire network and it will basically, uh, it, it has a, a engine which has, which has the OS uh, uh, rules and it, it validates against those rules and identifies the security issues. So if let's say if you want to, you know, try this, any of the URL uh, that I have. Okay. And I don't attack. It will start basically crawling the page, uh, going through ent entire network history, entire network logs, and it will validate against uh, the best practices, security best practices, which are configured by default, and it will give us the report. Uh, it just, I think, take a few seconds. Uh, it will finish. Uh, there are some disadvantages or limitations of this approach is that even if you do it via this UI or via command line or APIs, uh, you can only, you know, go URLs or page by page. Otherwise you have to write, you know, additional scripts for doing DAST. And this is the sample, you know, alerts that you get, or you can, you know, create a report. So uh, this is the scanning report that we got. Let's say we look at the, uh, any of the issue. Uh, for example, like this, this is a medium issue. Uh, let's say this, uh, this issue where cloud metadata is exposed. So there's a URL, uh, of metadata, which is exposed. Ideally it should be hidden, uh, latest metadata. So this will, uh, help, you know, any attacker to know, uh, the software configurations, which are there and can, you know, misuse, uh, accordingly. This is the sample report that I have, uh, and uh, though the disadvantage is that uh, by going manually, you have to crawl those URLs and a lot of pages in your applications are behind login and uh, they need to be, you know, uh, the flows needs to be uh, either scripted or you need to manually go through, or you can, you know, configure the proxy and uh, do those things manually, or you can uh, write scripts separately uh, uh, using, the, using the library uh, provided by Zap or other tools. Uh, separate separate libraries you can do. Uh, the the pro the disadvantage is that you know either you have to do manually or write separate scripts for for this one. So the additional effort is there. Okay, so uh, we'll take the example of web zap and uh, figure out that how we can have a similar report with Selenium also. So uh, now with this model, 
does it solves all our challenges so we can identify security bugs uh, earlier that is that is solved uh, can we do application can we do a penetration testing uh, as uh, seamlessly as like as similar to the application changes yes we can do because because of this model uh, but does it uh, does it have the same coverage as qa regression testing it's no because we'll have to you know do those things with these tools whether you're using you know uh, uh, zap or burp or any other tool we'll have to uh, do a similar a similar exercise of uh, same as qa regression testing uh, to reach to that that coverage because usually regression testing has uh, we cover everything in that uh, but to do again with the same tool the, the coverage is usually low uh, and then of course there's additional effort post testing phase so once you're done with uh, functional testing again you have to put effort uh, for you know doing the security scanning testing uh, again so these two problems are still you know open in this this model also these are the two problems you know the coverage is not similar as qa regression uh, and uh, there's additional effort post testing phase if you go over this approach so what could be a solution uh, a solution could be that we already have let's say uh, if you already have selenium test or apm scale test or any similar tool tests if you have but now in this case let's say if you have selenium test and you can perform regression flow on your website and you have zap which can identify security issues so why 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 not we can combine this so what if we can reuse this uh, selenium test and uh, for the security testing and make the dask better so uh, the approach will be a very simple actually in this case uh, that selenium test whatever we have we keep it as it is and it can perform regression flows on the website so there is no change you need to do in your uh, in your selenium scripts uh, or test anything additional uh, zap we just need to integrate it uh, with the libraries that it provides or you can use other also uh, like i have shared some examples burp also you can use uh, so the flow will be that whatever request your uh, client is making or the selenium is making through the browser zap comes in between as a proxy it listens to all the interactions goes through all the network and then basically it uh, does the same activity that we have done it basically identifies uh, all uh, uh, we can do it in two phases one is in a passive mode like just what we did we can check against all the all the uh, os top best practices or we can use in an attack mode, which can take more time. But for every page that we are going through in Selenium, it can identify security issues and give us report. So that is the solution which can you know solve uh, these two problems also: the problem of less coverage and problem of you know uh, reducing the F, uh, duplicate effort. So a CI/CD model right now is that you after the code build, deploy to test, you are doing end-to-end uh, -end testing and penetration testing almost together. So your Selenium and uh, Zap is in uh, sync to each other and then you are able to identify issues together and you are able to bug fix and release. So uh, the steps uh, the steps for this is that uh, you need to launch Zap on a port. Uh, you typically do it in a daemon mode and uh, not in a UI mode uh, for better performance. And also uh, in this, uh, in this uh, when you're calling with the library, uh, you set up a proxy, uh, Selenium traffic with Zap. So, uh, and then you run functional test, same as it is, you can run uh, in a passive mode. It will return, uh, it will basically listen to all the traffic and it will identify all the traffic, whatever interactions you're doing, whether you're doing API calls or, you know, you're loading some third party plugins, etc. It will look into those and it will identify the security vulnerabilities. And you can also invoke active scanner to get uh, vulnerabilities on each page, which in this case, it will uh, it will basically try to attack your website and uh, find out more issues, uh, uh, security issues in this one. Uh, these are the steps. Uh, how you can do basically the proxy is, uh, so while you're setting up your Chrome browser, right? You just need to uh, invoke a proxy and uh, set up the port uh, which you can listen to i'll have this example on github that link i'll share and i'll walk you through this also so uh, whenever the chrome driver initiates all the interactions will go through this proxy and then only you know uh, 
after that you can load your driver and continue with your test uh then to perform scan you can use the uh, api library from zap in this case or there are other tools also which provides a similar kind of apis uh, you can use so you basically initiate a scan from this uh, using the library and you pass the current url which is being you know under test for example if you are on home page or if you are on login page so whatever target url you are you pass it to the scanner and then wait for uh, response to come and then after the scan is uh, progressed you you get the responses and basically you uh, you can keep it somewhere or you can use it as a quality gate you know to check what number of issues are there and at the end you can uh, you can you can get a report uh, this is a report you can have you can customize it also or you can basically list the alerts also and you can put assertions that let's say number of high alerts should be zero or medium alerts or low 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 alerts should be always you know less than two etc you can put that also you can do because you are getting the entire uh, outcome of this tool uh, uh, after every every step in this case uh, this basically performs scan you can put in hooks of your any framework that you're using in our case we have an example of cucumber framework with java uh, so you can get a report like this okay so i'll i'll quickly show a demo okay i'll quickly show a demo uh, so i basically i have uh, I have a, I've set up a sample repository and shared this also on GitHub. So I have a sample, very basic Selenium Cucumber uh, test. Uh, so this is basically a feature, which is I'm uh, basically logging to juice shop. And after logging, I should, I'm verifying whether I'm logged in or not. So this has a page um, and uh, runner and steps are there. Um, so under the hooks, as I said, uh, what we are doing is basically we are listening to uh, we are basically set up a proxy and uh, it will entire network calls will go through that proxy and uh, after that what we are doing is that on every after every every step or we can choose we can do it after scenario also that what we are doing is we are calling the uh, we are calling the scan for uh, for zap apis we have set up uh, the apis for zap zap client and uh, okay so once we are getting the same that i mentioned right we are waiting for uh, the zap, zap scan to complete then only we proceed to the next step so if you have a login flow it will wait for the next step for the step to complete and scan to complete in this case of active in active scan and if you're doing a passive scan it will not wait it will you know your test will uh, can run uh, uh, separately and this the scan can run separately uh, passively but if in, in if you in, it will wait for you know uh, for the for the scan to uh, complete so that's why if we are running uh, uh, a passive scan it will not take additional time but if you are running an active scan where it is attacking your website and finding out issues uh, it's going to take more minute depending upon your network and uh, memory it can take many minutes uh, we can see uh, i can show you a demo where it might take even 20 minutes so i have taken a, a video recording also so let's let's take an example uh, where we uh, where I'm running this test, but I'm not doing any scan. So uh, let's take an example when I'm not doing any scan. I'm just running a simple test. Okay. So let me run the test. And I've taken an application which is full of vulnerabilities, uh, uh, so that I can you know get the detailed report as well. So yes, it just uh, logged in into application and it's a simple test. There is no scanning involved, uh, and got finished in few seconds. Uh, now let's if I try it in a passive mode. So in passive mode, uh, what it will do is that I need to start uh, the zap also in this case. 
So I'll start the Zap in daemon mode. Okay, so basically it's listing on this port and uh, all my Selenium interaction is going to now happen uh, via this Zap tool. So if I now run this, So same test is running right now also. It's not a change. Uh, the only difference is that you will get an additional uh, security report. Okay. So uh, you get a passive scan report. You can open. Uh, so it's very similar to the report that we had earlier, but in just a different format. Uh, and this is a passive scan report, so it not, might not be very thorough, but it also listed some of the medium issues, uh, like for example, this anti-click jacking header. So this is one issue where your website could be, you know, embedded inside any other uh, HTML page and it can be vulnerable. Somebody can uh, misuse your website. So these issues uh, are get will get listed, which we can, you know, uh, deep dive and go through without any, you know, much additional effort. And uh, it is basically logging all those pages which have, uh, it's basically going through all the network traffic, which uh, which we have gone in Selenium. So login page, home page, and, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, this, uh, the listing page, all the three pages it has uh, checked. This is the case with uh, the passive scan. Uh, we can also run with active scan, but, uh, uh, it's going to take, you know, 20 minutes. So I will not do it right now. I have a video where, uh, which I can play. Uh, I've given this video link in YouTube also. Okay. So, uh, I've just executed this with passive mode also. Uh, with active mode also so okay so i started the execution with active mode uh, once it starts uh, what it will do is that it will wait on each page and each step of your test uh, and it will allow the attack to cut completed from the zap tool uh, and it will list list all those issues so you can see the scan progress is you know zero percent right now uh, so on every page, it will do that. So let's say once it moves to second page, it will go to, and you can see the logs here also that uh, it's going to 18%. It will take 15, 20 minutes. And uh, once it completes uh, till 100%, so once it completes 100%, you can see the report. You can also see like uh, logs here, like it completed in 15 minutes. Uh, it takes 15 minutes because there are a lot of activities going on with in attack mode. And once you open it, you will see, you know, a lot more issues identified because in the active mode, uh, you can see there are zero high alerts, but in this case, they are two. So you'll see a lot more issues in this case of, uh, you know, uh, when you're running active mode, but the only thing is that it takes more time. So you need to manage accordingly. So that was the that was the demo part for this, uh, this one. Yeah. So the further roadmap is that uh, we'll uh, you know to reduce this effort. Uh, uh, I've already shared a, a GitHub repo where you can you know clone and try this yourself or uh, explore it even further. Uh, as a further roadmap, I like I'll, I'll try to make it as a library which you can you know directly uh, use instead of you know adding code. And some examples, my, not everybody will be, you know, work, working in uh, Java. So I'll share some example for Python and Ruby also on GitHub, so same repo uh, and test report integration. So we can set up uh, quality gates and uh, this I mentioned, right? How many issues which on which we can fail or pass uh, and support from other tools also similar to like Word Pro is also possible and uh, some CICD examples of GitHub actions.
So these these are the things that uh, will you know I'll add it on GitHub going ahead in some time. Uh, meanwhile, you can you know try yourself and explore this uh, self to see this if you feel it's useful. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I'm I'm done from my side. Uh, open for questions. Sit down. Yeah, thanks a lot, Irfan. Um, I think you can then stop sharing. Um. It was such a pleasant and insightful session. Um, so much to learn about DevSecOps and especially the demonstration that you took. So um, yeah, let's hear from the folks then because I see a lot of q and have come up and I'm sure a lot of uh, people here are interested to know more about this topic. So Irfan, we can address the first question, which is from Mahesh. Um, Mahesh has asked, is it possible to use this for native apps, uh, yeah, over to you. Uh, yes, Mahesh. So uh, it is possible for native apps in with APM also, uh, because uh, uh, I don't have example like uh, sample example ready, but uh, it's the same logic that uh, you are putting a proxy tool for all the networks which is happening. So even in case of APM, uh, you can put uh, you can put that entire uh, network. Uh, you can set up a proxy. So that all the interactions happen through the proxy and network, you will the uh, Zap or other tool can get, and you can get a similar report in this case. Uh, I don't have immediate example. I'll try to put it uh, in that GitHub only. Thanks, Irfan. So um, Mahesh has a follow up question. Also, can we do SQL injection with this? Uh, yes, yes. So as part of the attack mode, uh, there are plugins which we can configure. So for example, in the sample report that I have. Uh, for the active one, you can see SQL uh, uh, SQL injection also there. So uh, in the sample report video, you will see that in attack mode video, you can see SQL injections also identified on this page. Then we have a question from Srikant. Uh, can we configure our own custom security check on a WASP Zap tool? Uh, yes, yes, it is possible. So the WASP Zap tool is configurable. So you have that it's a plugin based architecture. So you can, you know, disable, enable uh, the security configurations which are there. Uh, so it is possible. Uh, I'm not sure if you can add custom checks uh, for that, but whatever is a list of, you know, if you feel some are not useful, you can enable, disable that. Uh, custom check, uh, uh, I'm not sure we need to check that. Thanks, Irfan. So Vijay has a question uh, whether Zap tool having support for Azure DevOps in order to integrate with CI CD. Uh, yes, so, uh, so OS is a free open source tool. So you can install in any any Linux or Windows server. So it's or even on Mac, any any server you can install. So it will not be issue. The only thing is that uh, you need to uh, maybe need uh, work with your DevOps team to ensure they are on same network. We have a question from Satya. Can we use the security testing and playwright automation? Uh, playwright also uh, we can basically because the uh, fundamental concept is going to be same that uh, you have the tool which is interacting with web application and the proxy in between. Uh, so it, it can be done, uh, but I haven't uh, used uh, playwright with this one, but it, it uh, theoretically speaking, I think it should be, uh, it should not be a problem there. Uh, Sushant is asking, can we use it for mobile applications? Uh, yes, yes. The same approach uh, will work for mobile application also because of the fundamentally we, uh, it's just uh, your tool is interacting to a mobile app. And if you have, a, if you set a proxy in between, which Zap has access to, it can give a similar result. Uh, Vijay has a question. Uh, he says he has uh, Selenium scripts which run for three hours and integrating Zap with active mode takes a lot of time. What would be the better solution to handle this? Yes, yes. So it's a good question. Actually, uh, Zap with active mode is going to take a lot of time. Uh, so while you're doing maybe in your regular uh, CICD or regular test, you would do it in functional test. And uh, uh, one option is to, you know, do it uh, maybe nightly or some in some way, which does not, you know, block, uh, uh, you, does not block your, you know, release run completely or otherwise, you know, you have to paralyze and see uh, if you can distribute this uh, accordingly, but yes, definitely it takes time. So uh, you can customize your plugins. It might reduce your time 
and use the ones which uh, which are you know required in your case so there's an interesting question um ankur has asked which do you prefer zap or bop which is easy to integrate with yes yes so both both are uh, both are good tools uh, the only thing is that uh, burp is a paid tool uh, uh, burp pro is a paid tool which has uh, all the features whereas zap has similar kind of features less uh, ui experience um, but it's free and open source so because we are in this free open source community so i'll prefer zap in that case but uh, uh, in terms of uh, you know better usability is uh, uh, burp is also good both are good but i would start i would just suggest you start with zap first and try if you are missing out something uh, then you can you know go for uh, enterprise tools alankar has a question how reliable is scanning through zap versus other security testing tools uh yes so there are uh, tools in market uh, which are you know more uh, paid and advanced and uh, they have better you know uh, better evaluation engines uh, they will give you less uh, uh, major advantage is they will give you less uh, uh, false positives so uh, that is advantage but they are they also have cost uh, associated with it A similar principle will work in this case they also have you know uh, apis which we can call and uh, listen to so uh, uh, definitely there is some advantage with the enterprise tool like burp pro which will give you less uh, less false positives and it will save you time in debugging in those cases Polkit has a question: Can we customize the ZAP reports as per our needs? Ah, uh, yes, yes. So in the report, if you see, basically what we are doing is we are putting, uh, we are uh, taking all the uh, all the vulnerabilities, uh, all the alerts, and we are creating a HTML report out of it. So since you have the data with you, you can you know customize and create any sort of structure to the HTML page. You can write. or you can you know there is a possibility to integrate with your existing test tool also like cucumber reports or like test portal etc uh veno has an interesting uh, question she has noticed so um you have started zap demon process in the beginning before starting the selenium test could you please confirm how this is going to be handled when running the test as part of the ci cd pipeline uh yes yes so uh, because i was running this locally i started uh, manually but you can have a dedicated uh, you can have a dedicated server instance or you can uh, run this basically there is docker also so you can just set up this uh, on any instance and ensure that this is available so this proxy uh, uh, this was running on local host 8090 so it should be available somewhere with an ip or url which you can uh, so uh, we need that you know zap to be either started before the test uh, or it needs to be available before that so you can keep it any other dedicated server and uh, you can continue with your ci cd process in that case girish has a question is zap uh, can zap be also implemented on cloud maybe using browser stack lambda test etc is there any additional configuration uh, no i think uh, with browser stack i think i have tried i'll uh, just update the example also so you can use because if you're using browser stack local uh it allows you to you know uh, proxy the port uh, the all the network through your uh, given machine where you are running and because your machine itself is proxying to another zap so it is possible to you know uh, continue with that that approach also uh, you just need to have a tunnel mechanism which i think in browser stack case they have browser stack local in lambda also they have a tunneling mechanism but uh, uh, we just we can need to uh, we just need to try it once to just confirm it there are tons of questions coming in so it seems this is a very interesting and hot topic but yeah we'll take two more questions and then folks probably all can reach out to irfan in the hangout area uh, post this session so yogendra has a question uh, can we also use zap proxy with api automation uh, yes yes api definitely it will be much easier because same principle is there uh we just need to proxy so i think maybe you are using rest assured or postman so just need to ensure that uh, whatever traffic you whatever request you are making is going through uh through zap uh, one thing uh, just i want to you know clarify is that uh, we cannot uh, we cannot do security scanning on any website uh, because it is not allowed in that case 
and uh, it will not work because on https websites let's say if you try to do it on google or youtube it will give a certificate error so uh, i recommend you do it only on your application and uh, where you might need for https application you might need to you know configure certificate also that's just one step uh, needed but yes for api for sure you can do it in the same way awesome then uh, let's take the final question for our session uh, Vijay has a question. Should we again depend on external vendors for security testing, for example, DAST, after ZAP scanning is done in house? Or this scanning is enough to secure our product? Uh, that's actually a very uh, uh, contextual question. It depends upon your company policy, etc. But I would say definitely it will help because let's say if you're getting 100 issues or like 10 issues, you will you will be prepared. You know, you know, maybe five issues in advance. So it will definitely help you to be more, much more prepared uh, for external one. But I think whether it is sufficient or not, that I think might be your call and your company's call, depending upon, uh, you know, your policies. All right, folks. Uh, then thank you, everyone. Uh, thanks, Irfan, for sharing your experience today. And it's been a really insightful session.